us. Um, yet again, you have um, on stage some Estonian with a provocative uh, title to talk about. I assure you this title was uh, offered by the organizers, but I do agree with it because uh, I do think that uh, both Estonia and Lithuania can have 10 unicorns, and I will um, argue this um, uh, shortly. First of all, um, uh, of course, thank you, Vlada, for getting us all awake. Uh, this is, was extremely needed for me because I'm not a morning person myself. And thank you, Audius, for uh, actually telling half of the things I was planning to tell. So my task will be so much easier and we can cut some time. And, and that's really synergy in the making, you know. Let's join hands in that. Now, um, Continuing when, where audience left off, uh, I think uh, one essential point is that unicorns and startups in general are not um, uh, understood enough in terms of their impact to the society. I would argue even that we cannot accurately uh, measure their impact. Why? Uh, because, uh, first of all, if we measure GDP, GDP means um, in simplification, value added. Now, startups, when they grow, they often don't make money. They don't uh, make profit, but they burn money. And once they are sold at the valuation of, let's say, 1 billion US dollars or 1 billion euros, this is not actually calculated in GDP as well. Uh, it might be calculated later when this money is reinvested and making new money. But nevertheless, I think that the impact to, to GDP is not uh, measured uh, as it should be. Uh, of course, uh, having said that, uh, the impact to, to the capital market and the impact to uh, labor uh, taxation, for example, is huge. The biggest Estonian startups uh, pay millions of euros annually in uh, income tax, in social tax, and of course, the spillover of those companies is immense. Okay, but now to the business. First of all, what is the only difference between Estonia and Lithuania on one side and Finland, Sweden and many other countries on the other side? Are we lazier in this part of the world than the Finns or Swedes? I would argue definitely not. Are we in any way less intelligent? Obviously not. Are we you know, less hardworking? No, we are not. I would argue the only thing is that Finland, Sweden and many other countries have been able to grow their economies for centuries in a row. And in our case, we have only been able to build our economy around 30 years in a row. So having said that, our challenge is to be very fast and very smart in order to catch up with the living standard of Finland or Sweden or any other country for that matter. And uh, it's quite clear that it's difficult uh, for us to be very um, successful in, in capital intens intensive uh, production, like, you know, become a global leader in steel or something like that. But we can become global leaders in digital. And unicorns very often are digital. So, so let's focus on that and let's focus on being fast instead of uh, being uh, uh, big. Let me tell you all the secrets. First of all, these are those four unicorns. Bolt, as was said by Audrius uh, already, is actually Taxify. It, it changed its name last week, so it's still confusing and, and hard to keep in mind. But the first reason why we have four unicorns and, and why they are not appearing in the statistics is because TransferWise is actually registered in uh, UK and Skype is now part of Microsoft, so it doesn't probably even legally exist anymore. The first, number one reason, I would like to say is because we have great government in Estonia. Or we had, you know, when the previous prime minister was a nice guy. <laughs> but that's not the case. Uh, government... Um, I will come to government as well, but the number one reason is Skype. And, and why is it, yes, uh, as Audrey just said, uh, those guys who were founders of Skype, they now have um, uh, lots of money to invest in, in uh, other startups, and they do that. Uh, and tens of millions of venture capital has been pouring to Estonian um, 
uh, venture capital scene because of Skype. But even more importantly, Skype gave us the understanding that it is possible with four people, four Estonian guys, not American guys, not German guys, four Estonian guys starting a company right here in Estonia and it grows to eight and a half billion in worth. So knowing that this is possible actually took down so many barriers that I would argue it's much, much, much more important to Estonian economy than the money that came from the very successful exit. Now, secondly, uh, throughout the years, there were, I think, around 1,000 Estonians who worked for Skype. And each and every one of them has first-hand understanding what it is to become from zero to unicorn. 1,000 people in Estonia. This is huge. We only have uh, 650,000 in the workforce. So 1,000 is, is a great, great part of that. And uh, many of them actually not only exited with, you know, a couple of hundred thousand or, or some of them with a couple of million um, uh, euros, they exited from Skype also to start their own companies. And, and for me, it was like strange because, you know, you have built Skype to be something really great. Why are you going away? And they said, Skype became too suit. I want to repeat this success, but now on my own. And I want to be an entrepreneur and see if I can make it as well. So first, for example, TransferWise founder, uh, Tavet Hindrikus, a good friend of mine for more than 20 years, he was the first paid employee or first non-founder employee in Skype. So he not only had the money to start TransferWise, but also the wisdom. And it has been repeating itself. And he's, by the way, also one of the essential investors in Bolt. So again, you know, this, this uh, helps a lot. Secondly, uh, we have something, um, you know, Estonians are those people who, you know all about it, right? You have, I know the jokes, I know the jokes. You, 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 Estonians are the people who are not the easiest to talk to, and when we come ab go abroad, we find another Estonian in the audience and try to talk with them, right? Because, you know, if we talk to any Lithuanian, we might actually find out new things, and th this is scary for us. So, um, Gareci, Estonski, Barni, uh, we, we are always very kind of, you know, sticking to, to each other and, and talking to each other. Now, usually this is not a good thing, but where is it a good thing is uh, Estonians um, work together very closely to share each other's experiences. And once some guy from Skype or some guy from TransferWise has the contact of some major VC, he's quite certain to share this contact with others as well. So it has been called by tech magazines Estonian Mafia. I hope there is no Italians in the room because Italians have a slightly different connotation of the word Mafia. But for us, it's just a kind of family and, and meaning that you know, if, if somebody from those companies has a very good contact or, or a very good um, know-how, we share it with others. And I hope that, that someday we'll, we will bring this Estonian mafia to, to a more Baltic mafia to, to share this between each other as well. So, uh, and, and this is actually something I'm trying to do here right now to share some Estonian secrets um, with our good friends here in Lithuania. Second, image. This is a picture, not probably the best picture, but this is a picture from Switzerland. Now, when you think about Switzerland, you immediately know good quality. Where it comes from? Watches, Swiss knives, and probably some other goods. Now, if you think about any Swiss product, anything, clothes, briefcase, you immediately think that this is something of good quality even though you have no idea of this particular company. Made in Switzerland is so strong quality sign because of watches, knives, and some other things, right? So you assume that if it's made in Switzerland, it must be great. Just yesterday, I found out that the coffee machine maker, Jura, is more like a Dutch company, but they market themselves as a Swiss company because it you know, shows Swiss quality. This, this is a kind of uh, point, uh, point made that Swiss have been extremely good in building their image and w whatever comes from Switzerland 
it is automatically good. Now, next country, uh, Estonia. What we have been trying to do, uh, somewhat unconsciously, somewhat uh, during the later years consciously, is building the image of Estonia being an ICT society. And ICT society means that um, if we have a very advanced e-government and if we have uh, software developers that do state-of-the-art things, you kind of assume that all other ICT companies coming from Estonia bear the same quality label. So I think this is very, very important also for Lithuania to think, what is your image in this world? Is it um, building a very conscious uh, regulation, uh, being open to artificial intelligence and fintech, for example? Is it, uh, is it something else? What is the image why anyone from the world when they think of Lithuania, what is the first thing that comes to your mind and, and whether you consider it uh, very positive or, or whether it adds to the stories of the unicorns. Now we come to the third and I would say least of, of those three things, the government role. Of course, government has a great role in building the country image as well. And, and some say that the best government is the one that stays away from uh, business uh, from happening, and, and this I agree as well. But I would still say that uh, consciously building an environment that is uh, enabling also startups to grow is extremely important. One big topic, uh, obviously, is that the startups tend to be international, so the government needs to enable also non-Estonians or non-Lithuanians to work in the country. I know this is a hugely controversial issue in, in most of European countries, but this is definitely one thing. Second, ease of doing business in general. For any government in the world, I would say the best uh, uh, thing to look at is e ease of doing business indexes, be it Heritage Foundation or, or World Bank, it's all there. You know what to do, it's subtitles or subcategories, if you follow that, you are sure to make your environment uh, better. And also, of course, uh, smaller things, you get, need to get feedback from the um, companies regularly. It might be that you know, the taxation on stock options is not adequate anymore. It might be that the regulation is not enabling some sort of fintechs to, to grow. Whatever it is, government has to work, in my opinion, together with the companies. And sometimes government has to experiment it, uh, itself as well. It's all about mentality. And in Estonia in 2014, we took a huge risk in introducing e-residency. You know, we are not crazy people. We do understand when we hand out identities to lots of uh, nationalities, it bears risks with that. But this kind of mentality actually gave Estonia a huge boost in this number two thing, image where the country is considered to be open for innovation, and rightfully so. So sometimes government needs to innovate as well. Now, when, if I have to uh, guess, or if I have to propose in which sectors Lithuania could find its unicorns, I would uh, name, I think, four or five. First, uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is going to happen. It is already there in many cases, but it will be in so many more that we just don't understand that yet. Self-driving cars will be on the roads of all European cities. My question is, is Vilnius among the first or last? And this is a question of government innovation, this is a question of uh, city planning, this is a question of whether there are Lithuanian companies enabling that. Secondly, I would argue fintech. This is a panel in, in Lithuanian um, uh, uh, Vilnius Blockchain Center where we were together with, um, uh, with uh, uh, several panelists talking about uh, uh, the F Lithuania or, or Vilnius as a capital of, of European fintech. And, and once there is this kind of political commitment, I really believe that there is potential for that. And by the way, you know, we still have these kind of things in our pockets, those kinds of things were invented 60 years ago, 6-0. Some numbers here, secret number on the other side, who could ever guess? So, 
I, I, you know, this can be reformed, dear, dear friends. I know that there are some Lithuanian companies that are doing it right now, and I hope that uh, this, will, um, this will happen soon. Third, um, yeah, this is also uh, a person you, you might uh, recognize again from uh, Blockchain Center Vilnius. Third is blockchain technology. Blockchain technology, despite what is the rate for Bitcoin or what is the rate for Ether, is independent of those cryptocurrencies. I would argue that blockchain is something extremely positive for safeguarding data and being open for, for blockchain developments is something that Lithuania has been during the recent years and, and it needs to continue. And, and the third, I would argue, is health. We saw a very nice uh, presentation uh, uh, by Vlada. Uh, there is another company headquartered around uh, 100 meters from here. It's called Limpo, and, and they are doing uh, basically world-breaking things in, in terms of motivating people to exercise. And not only in Lithuania, but they are already conquering the world. Just a couple of pictures here from, uh, from um, uh, we, uh, Dallas Mavericks, uh, Karolina Wozniacki, and so forth. You know, if, if a Lithuanian start startup is bold enough to take those kind of world leaders to their uh, uh, ambassadors, I'm quite sure that they can make it to unicorn status as well. And that's about it. Um, there are at least five sectors where there are already Lithuanian companies that have a potential of being unicorns. Which ones of them are going to make it? I don't know. I'm sure that some of them are going to make it because Lithuania, just like Estonia, has many, many advantages compared to bigger countries. And, and let's keep in mind that um, in digital space, it's not about big countries uh, being stronger than the small ones. It's all about fast countries being stronger than the slow ones. And Estonia and Lithuania have all the potential for being fast countries that react to changes and cope with them. Thank you very much. Kadangi buvo paminėta, kad Lietuvai turi tam tikrus stereotipus apie didžiai gerbimus brolius estus. Nesusilaikau nuo liūdno konstantavimo, kad stereotipas, kad estai labai lėti, dėja jau nuėjo į praeitį ir labai retai jau išgirsti šitą juoką. Labai norėtųsi artimiausių metų išgirsti kitą stereotipą, kad Lietuviai yra labai greitai ir tas tikrai nužiūgintų daug labiau ir kad mes greičiau prilygstame esams ypač startuolių vystimo ekosistemos dalyje.